tonight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning Ally News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. A Long Island nanny has been charged with assault after allegedly feeding an over-the-counter antihistamine to a four-and-a-half-month-old infant. It's reported the medicine was labeled not to be given to children younger than four and could cause serious side effects or death. Police say 48-year-old Annalise Pucato of Plainview was observed on Friday on surveillance equipment the Laurel Hollow family had hooked up to their computer, giving the baby medicine with an eyedropper. Pucato, who was hired by the family as a nanny last month, was arrested yesterday. It's believed she gave the medicine to the infant to calm her and may have administered the same medicine several times before. A Long Island man has been sentenced to 22 years in jail for a gang-related shooting that killed one person and injured two others. The shooting happened at the Central Islip Recreation Center during a Memorial Day party back in 2008. Following the shooting, 21-year-old Lavelle Todd of Central Islip fled to North Carolina, where he was arrested by U.S. Marshals. He was convicted of manslaughter and assault in court in Riverhead two months ago. The Suffolk County District Attorney's Office had asked for a maximum sentence of 75 years to life in prison. U.S. Senator Charles Schumer says Nassau County's new flood map is based on flawed data. And today he called upon the inspectors general of the Departments of Defense and Homeland Security to investigate the validity of the Nassau flood map that was made by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. According to Schumer, the new map was not drawn using Nassau information because he says that would have cost too much. He says the faulty map has forced more than 25,000 structures into high-cost flood insurance zones with annual premiums as high as $3,000. And according to Schumer, if the map is faulty, the affected residents shouldn't have to pay all that money. How much it would cost to do a separate Nassau study. Clearly, they weren't happy with the Suffolk study. When they heard it would cost a million dollars, they backed off and just shoved Suffolk's findings onto Nassau, which is unfair to the people of Nassau. Not that Suffolk's were wrong for Suffolk. They may be, but that's not what we're saying. But they're certainly wrong for Nassau. Our property values were decreased approximately sixty to $100,000. Now, in this economy, that's a real heavy hit. <laughs> Local residents say people they know have faced foreclosure because of the higher flood insurance premiums. The bank will force me to buy insurance, flood insurance for the house, and that now went up $1,200. So now I'm paying roughly 19 and change. Schumer is requesting the Departments of Defense and Homeland Security to work together to determine whether a new map should be drawn for Nassau County. A man described as homeless in Suffolk County has been charged with impersonating a police officer. Detectives say while investigating an incident on Montauk Highway in Mastic Friday night, the suspect was observed creating a disturbance. They say 41-year-old Derek Diskin approached the detectives yelling and behaving in a threatening way. Detectives say Diskin identified himself as a police officer and displayed a gold badge and then resisted arrest. He's charged with criminal impersonation, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and weapon possession. A Long Island woman has been charged with attacking another woman with a claw hammer outside a Westbury restaurant. Police say the two women got into an argument inside the TGI Friday's restaurant on Merrick Avenue Saturday night. Then the fight moved outside. It's reported 23-year-old Crystal Martin of Westbury pulled a claw hammer out of her purse and began hitting the 23-year-old victim. A witness grabbed the hammer, but police say Martin continued to pound the victim with her fists. The victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Martin has been charged with assault and possession of a dangerous weapon. 
Well, it's Valentine's Day, and some North Hempstead couples who've been married more than half a century took advantage of this special time of year to renew their wedding vows. More than five dozen couples participated in a recommitment ceremony at the clubhouse at Harbor Links in Port Washington. To help celebrate a fantastic time with people of uh, higher in age that uh, usually are neglected, that don't really get the opportunity to come out as much as we'd like. We in the town of North Hempstead really pride ourselves in taking care of and doing things for our senior citizens. We have Project Independence, which allows them to stay in their homes rather than have to sell, and we provide them extra services to make that easier for them. This is more the social side of that. It's to take them out, to celebrate with them the lives that they have lived here in the town of North Hempstead with their spouses, and on a celebration for Valentine's Day and our anniversary, we just thought this was a terrific way to make sure that they understand they're still part of the North Hempstead family. Is take a lesson from these couples. And they did talk about love, they talked about patience, they talked about understanding. Give her a kiss. It's a marriage long lasting. You, you have to like each other before you, you really love each other. And you mustn't look for ways to argue. I mean, just uh, sometimes you have to absorb some of the what you think is hurting you. I remember in, in those days, before, if I couldn't get my father's car to go visit, I lived in Brooklyn, she lived in Queens. Took an hour and a half to get there. Bus, walk, trolley. And you find yourself going day after day. Must be the one, I guess. Well, North Hempstead officials say they hope younger couples will listen to the older generation and learn that the secret to a long and healthy marriage is to work hard at it. One Florida retirement community says it's found a solution to its perennial problem of not having enough men at their Valentine's Day dance. They're hiring men. Women vastly outnumber men in senior housing and nursing homes across the United States. So one community in Boca Raton, Florida, hires men to make sure all the single ladies have a dance partner. They say they also get some volunteers from a local college fraternity, too. One of the men says his presence brings women back to another time. And in a sense, he says it brings them hope. Well, it's a mixed day on Wall Street today. The Dow was down just over five points, but NASDAQ was up seven and three quarters points, and the S&P was up a little more than three points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. See a screening of the film The Philadelphia Story at New York Institute of Technology's Dieseversky Center in Old Westbury on Wednesday, February 16th at 5.30 p.m. For more information, call 516-686-7567. Take a presidential tour down Main Street with the Northport Historical Society in Northport on Sunday, February 20th at 1.30 p.m. For more information, call 631-757-9859. Celebrate Darwin Day at the Ethical Humanist Society in Garden City on Sunday, February 20th at 11 a.m. For more information, call 516-741-7304 or take part in the annual Mardi Gras Gala at Planting Fields Arboretum State Historic Park in Oyster Bay on Sunday, February 20th from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m. For more information, call 631-321-3510. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to LI News Tonight at nyit.edu. In Melville, J.B. Buno, L.I. News Tonight. In Beth Page, Stephen Katov, L.I. News Tonight. At Belmont Park, Sophia Allen, L.I. News Tonight. These are just a few of the people who have been reporting the news for L.I. News Tonight over the past year, and you could be one of them. Television news is an exciting and challenging career that could put you in the middle of what's happening and in touch with the people who are making the news. A career in television news journalism can offer you the opportunity to work as a reporter, camera person, or videotape editor, or any number of behind-the-scenes jobs, including producing or manning the assignment desk. And it's a career that can be yours by joining the LI News Tonight news team. 
Produced at studios on the campus of the New York Institute of Technology, LI News Tonight offers television news internships that can earn you college credits and the possibility of being on the air in just a few weeks. LI News Tonight has been the jumping off point for many local and national news professionals, and you could be next. Call 516-686-7952 for more information on how to enroll for LI News Tonight and let us put you on the air. Taking a look at some headlines from around the world today. Egypt's ruling military council has issued a new communique calling on labor leaders to stop strikes and protests to allow a sense of normalcy to return to the country. The message came as thousands of state employees from ambulance drivers to police and transport workers protested today to demand better pay and conditions. Egypt is in the midst of a growing wave of labor unrest unleashed by the uprising that ousted Hosni Mubarak from the presidency on Friday. Meanwhile, reports that the 82-year-old Mubarak may be in bad health. Two Cairo newspapers report today that Mubarak was refusing to take medication and repeatedly passing out at his resort residence. Experts are reporting a partial recovery in the annual winter migration of monarch butterflies to Mexico following a devastating 75 percent drop last year. The conservation group World Wildlife Federation Mexico says the orange and black butterflies from the U.S. and Canada are covering an area of forest that's more than double that of last year when their numbers dropped to historic lows. But officials said today the numbers are of migrating monarch butterflies are still well below average. And an Indonesian cleric has warned his young followers against celebrating Valentine's Day, saying it's the same as promoting faiths other than Islam and could lead to forbidden sex. The chairman of the Indonesian Council of Clerics said today that the romantic holiday historically stems from Christianity. He added that unmarried young people expressing affection with kisses could lead to forbidden sexual relations. Small groups of a few hundred also staged protests against Valentine's Day in several cities in Indonesia, which is the world's most populous Muslim nation. A new poll shows Governor Andrew Cuomo has reached his all-time high in popularity among New York voters after just more than a month in office. The Siena Research Institute poll shows 72 percent of voters support his budget, which includes deep cuts to education and health care programs. Cuomo is now trying to muster public support to get his spending proposal through the legislature. The Democrat is viewed favorably by 77 percent of voters. That's seven percentage points more than a month ago and 13 points above his rating in November when he won the office that his father Mario Cuomo once held. Three friends returning from a birthday celebration in Manhattan were killed when their car crashed on the Southern State Parkway in Roosevelt. Police say the accident happened early yesterday when their car struck a bridge embankment and burst into flames. The men were celebrating two of their birthdays. Naquan Bell's 21st birthday was Tuesday and Brendan McRae's 24th birthday was January 28th. The third victim, identified as Stanley Seguis, was 23. The cause of the crash was not immediately known. We had a mix of sun and clouds today. It was a windy day. Today's high was up into the low 50s. Tonight, partly cloudy and windy, much colder with a low down into the mid-20s. Tomorrow, sunny and windy, a high in the mid-30s. Wednesday, partly cloudy with a high into the mid-40s. Thursday, partly cloudy with a high into the low 50s. And then the outlook for Friday, partly cloudy with a high up around 60 degrees. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.